Imagine waking up one day to notice that you're able to see your body, hear and smell your environment like usual, but you're not able to feel your body's presence. This missing sensation is loosely labeled proprioception and is related to the overall feeling of your body, including the kinesthetic and vestibular senses. A man named Ian Waterman woke up one morning and experienced the loss of proprioception. He was able to stare down at his body, but he was unable to feel his body's position in space. If he were to close his eyes and have earplugs in, he'd be totally unaware of his limb placement. He had caught a virus that caused him to lose all sense of touch and position in space. He spent many weeks in the hospital, while not being necessarily paralyzed. He still had the ability to move, however, just completely different than what he was used to. He is not aware until now of how much his movement relied on proprioception and his awareness of space. Ian was able to regain movement. He could sit up, walk, and take objects handed to him, but he had to rely on his sight in order to do it. He wasn't able to tell if he had grabbed something properly, as he would receive no sensation from his fingertips. It was possible that it could slip out of his hand. So he had to make sure that every single move he made was supervised by his own accord. The only feedback he could receive from the movement of his limbs had to be obtained visually, as he could send signals to his body the same way as anybody watching this could, but could not receive signals back from his receptor cells in his muscles. This meant that he could not perform actions which required his eyes to be set on one thing while his limbs did another action, such as driving. What is proprioception? Proprioceptive and kinesthetic senses are often used interchangeably, but overall, both carry out the role of having awareness over bodily movement and position in space. Using kinesthetic sense is differentiated from proprioception by excluding the sense of equilibrium and balance from kinesthesia. For example, an inner ear infection might degrade the sense of balance. This would degrade the proprioceptive sense, but not the kinesthetic sense. Another difference is that kinesthesia focuses on the body's motion or movements, while proprioception focuses on the body's awareness of its movements and behaviors. Kinesthesia is more behavioral and proprioception is more cognitive. Proprioception informs us of our body's placement and is linked to awareness and cognition, while kinesthesia provides a response to how we move in space, a behavioral component. The kinesthetic system is able to function because of specialized sense receptor cells called proprioceptors, which are found throughout the body and inner ear where the vestibular system is. These cells cooperate with each other and with neurons in the somatosensory region of the brain. The neurons lie under the skin and respond to pressure, while some are in the internal organs and another act as receptors in the muscles, tendons, and joints. Changes in pressure on the skin and muscle tensions in these receptor cells are signaled to the brain and are crucial to guiding motor action. The vestibular sense contributes to our ability to maintain balance and body posture. It also collects information critical for controlling movement and the reflexes that move various parts of our bodies to compensate for changes in our body position. Therefore, both proprioception and kinesthesia interact with information provided by the vestibular system. Perception and spatial awareness of the body may also involve the vestibular system and a fluid-filled receptor system located in the vestibules of the inner ear. The system directs attention to being shaken, tilted, or rolled around. It also makes us aware of which way is up, and it is what is possible for giving us motion sickness. Overall, the sense of one's position is relation to speed, direction, gravitation, and movement of the body. Three semicircular canals in the inner ear contain fluid that is triggered by movement and stimulates the hair cells. Once the hair cells are stimulated, it sends a signal to the brain via the auditory nerve. The three canals are not the only part that stimulate the hair cells. There are two vestibular sacs that are located between the condyla and semicircular canals which bend the hair cells when movement is detected. Motion sickness is a result from the intense stimulation of the hair cells in vestibular areas.